Never has the outside been more important than it is today. With the fear of being isolated or maybe in a few days total lockdown, the outside suddenly becomes a very important place. That loss of liberty, that loss of freedom makes us want to be outside. And just in case we can't be, I thought I'd come outside today and find some things that might inspire our work and give meaning to it. And I thought I'd tell you how you can use the outside, bring it inside and create a lovely piece of work from it. Let's take a look at the wood pile. The wood pile in my garden is really rather exciting. It's not really something to be ignored. All of the bark is coming off the trees as they lie dying, but that really means we can carry it inside and we can do something with it. There's some evidence here of a bird that's had a little bit of a fight. We could use a feather in our work. There are bits of fir tree, now those are really exciting when they're pushed into clay, so that's worth keeping. There's another branch here and it's got cones on it. Cones make fabulous tools. I'll show you what you can do with them later. But really what's exciting me is the bark, the bark that's coming off the tree. Trees are so important. Are you a tree hugger? You can hug your pot instead. We'll put this bark into the texture of the clay. When you were little, did you do rubbings? I did. Look at that pattern that's evolving. It's not just a pattern, it's life. Every bit of that pattern reflects the life this tree has had. All those rings are years and years and years. And all this bark shows aging. And all this pattern can be transferred onto clay. And if we transfer it onto clay, if we take this inside, we can keep it inside. And our pot will have so much meaning. Let's get started. Potters, we've come indoors, it's getting a bit chilly outside, we've collected lots of things and here is a slab pot that I'd like to demonstrate to you how to make. It's got a pattern on it which has been created by using the bark. If you look at the bark on here, you can see the bark in the pot. I think that's wonderful. What it really means is that imprint has been um, preserved and we can look at it and we can hug it, we can hug our pot and we can think of the outside. And what's lovely is also that I put a few twigs in from outside and some daffodils. It really represents this time of year. If you'd like to know how to make a slab pot, then you'll need one of my parcels. In the parcel there will be some bark, there will be some odds and ends, so that the outside is brought inside for you. So don't worry if you're isolated. This is really why we created these parcels. The parcel comes in a box like this, and inside are all kinds of goodies. We've got a booklet which will tell you everything you need to know about your project, but of course you'll, you'll watch this online too. You'll have some plastic to keep your work in, you'll have a bag with lots of tools in, a wire cutter, a cloth to put onto the table so that your clay doesn't stick to the table, that would be horrid, some slurry in a pot, so you can stick your pieces together and a lump of clay. In the studio, I've got everything I need. You might get a rolling pin if you ask for one. But because you haven't, I've improvised. The first video was all about improvising. This plastic must be used with the plastic side down and the cloth side up. I don't need to use it because I've got my own. But let's just place those there and get started. So, to make a slab pot, the first thing that you need is a slab of clay. And you've got a wire cutter so that you can cut the clay. When I'm 
not using the clay, I pop it into some plastic so that it stays soft. If your clay goes hard, you won't be able to use it. I thought actually, before we started, that it might be a good idea if I played with some of the things that we had from outside and see what I can create in terms of pattern. I've got my guides next to me so that when I roll the clay and I turn it over, I will eventually have to stop because I won't be able to go any further. The problem for you, of course, is that you don't have sticks in your box. Basically, they were too long. However, you can improvise. Again, in our first video, we discussed how you could improvise. So, don't forget, if you don't have any sticks, table mats will do, either side of the clay. The thinner table mats are okay, but for the slab pot project, I'd go for something a little bit thicker. This is a thicker one. Six millimeters is a good depth to have the clay. If it's too thin, it'd be difficult to join together. When you've rolled a piece of clay out, what you need to do, and to, to roll it out, you do need to um, turn it over lots and lots of time. What you need to do is to compress it, and that kind of brings all the clay back together. Um, it stops it splitting later. Now, in your bag, you've got what we call a kidney, and you can pull this across the clay to compress it. But before making the slab pot that we're going to do, which is a rectangular or a square pot, um, I thought we'd play with texture using the things that we've got. So we've got some fern. I'm going to place that on top. I'm going to get my rolling pin and roll it into the clay and see what happens. The best bit is pulling it off. I really like that pattern. You can't really forget that that is the outside, can you? We've got some little tiny bits and pieces stuck on here. Um, the problem with something like that is that it's very, very thick. And if it goes too far into the clay, there's a possibility that your clay will crack later. And that's why I've removed these to press into the clay. Of course, they're all stuck in there now. But that doesn't matter because inside your box, and please be careful of these, we've got a pin and it's got a plastic cover and you just need to pick up the ends of these pieces um, and pull them away. It's not simple, but it has got some really lovely patterns there. I like that. So don't put the big, thick bark in. That would make the clay much too thin and it would break. You can leave it in if you wish, because during the firing, it will actually burn out. However, I know you guys, and I know you're being patient, so you'll probably end up pulling it all out, just so you can see the pattern. What else have we got over here? Uh, we've got some of these. I found them on the floor. I'm not quite sure what they are. But let's press them into the clay and see what happens. Oh, I really like that. That's really cool. This one's got a big bit on the end, which, you know, be careful what you're doing. So the first one I pressed straight in, and the next one I pushed on its side. I'm not sure what that is. Let's just see what happens if I press it. Makes quite deep patterns. You need to be careful of that. You could even use a, pe a pebble. Look at this pebble. It really will build pattern up beautifully. And that pebble has got a really lovely pattern to it. If I turn it over, it's got a different pattern. Let's use a different pebble. And you can build these patterns up and play with them. So, the outside has bought, been bought inside, whether it's from the stones and the pebbles, the little bits of fern, um, or, or the strands of grass. And they're a permanent reminder of what we may well be missing soon. I particularly like the bark, and you can see I've used this one. And so I thought today that I would make my slab pot just using the bark. Let me show you, show you how it's done. Okay, so just give your clay a little bit of a wedge. That's 
kneading really, if you've had to roll it up, press it down on the table and then start rolling it out. If you've got a very high table, that's quite difficult because you can't get your body weight over it. So actually a lower table is better. As you roll it out, twist it around and it will make it easier. Most people think they've rolled a piece of clay out before it's actually rolled out. So don't think for a minute that it's rolled out too soon. If it's becoming a bit of a funny shape, then you can take some bits off the edges and just make it into an interform. Sometimes when you wedge clay together, you get lots of air bubbles in it. I've got a few bubbles there, but don't worry about that. All you need to do is get your pin and just pop them and they'll be fine. When you've got your clay rolled out flat, you need to take the kidney, the wooden kidney, and run it across the clay to compress the clay. Now this is the exciting bit, we're going to actually start to put some texture into it and this is where we get the outside to come inside. I've got a piece of bark here that um, I carried in and what I'm going to do is to remove the sticks. I've got to be a little bit careful because I don't want it to go, I don't want to press too hard because if I do then the clay will get too thin. But actually it's quite hard to press too hard. This. There we go, let's take a look. I like that. The great thing about putting something into the clay that creates texture is that when you put a glaze on, then all of the glaze runs in and out of those lines and you get some very interesting undulating thicknesses and thinnesses of glaze that create a nice effect. I could have done this across. I could have done this on a diagonal. There's so many different ways. I could have used different parts. I could have decided to pull this part in. But that's a nice piece of textured clay. Now that I've textured it, I'm going to carefully pick it up, roll it halfway across the rolling pin, pop the newspaper down, and then lift and put it onto the paper carefully. This is the point at which you need your template. Here is mine. Place it on the clay. It's great if you can get more than one piece out, but if you can't, you can't. You just roll it up, wedge it all up again, and make your piece. Before you cut, place a ruler on top if you haven't got any guides, and cut. You might not have a knife like mine, but any knife in the kitchen will do. We have not provided knives. We have, however, for our younger members, provided these tools, and to be honest, they're just as good. Let's have a look. It's fine. Now all these pieces can be wedged together and added to a little bit more soft clay and then the rest of the pieces can be rolled out. Take this off. It's very important, did you say me remove all of the clay from around? It's very important to don't pick up this piece of clay because it will stretch. Just pop your hand underneath and that can go onto a board. Um, now, this has got to dry out. When you've cut all four sides out, you'll also need a base. The base should be cut out of a piece of clay that is a random shape. It needs to be plenty big enough for the bottom of your pot, but don't try to cut the shape because you can guarantee when you try to build it, the base will be too small. So a random piece of clay is all you need to dry out. What I do to dry the clay out is one of three things. I either leave it overnight in a cool room, maybe the outside shed, not in a heated house, and usually by the next day the clay is leather hard and that's um, like cardboard. It's got moisture in it. If it doesn't have moisture in it, it won't dry together. So if you dry it too much, that's a disaster. Um, but in a cool room or a shed overnight, it should dry just enough to become leather hard. Leather hard is when you hold it up and it doesn't flop over. 
there's no floppiness there. Okay, but there is moisture there. When I hold it with my hands, I can feel the moisture in the clay, so it's still going to stick together. So you cut out all of your pieces and you place them on a board, you leave them overnight. If you're impatient, you can actually use a hairdryer. Just an ordinary hairdryer like this will do. Make sure your hands are dry first. And what you have to do with your hairdryer is to carefully wash this one all stuck in here. So just waft it over your work. Don't hold it in one place and overheat one area. And don't hold it at the edges. Just generally waft it and keep feeling the clay and turning it over until it's there. The other thing you could do is put it outside on a beautiful day like today. It dries really quickly, maybe even just half an hour. So if you leave it outside, keep going and having a look and turning it over once it gets firm. So we have rolled out our clay, we've textured it um, and we've left it outside to dry. Basically, this is how the clay is when it's been rolled out. And um, when it's been left outside or overnight, it will be like that. So there's a little bit of flex in it, a little bit, but um, it will stand up. I think that's the test really. Will it stand up? Will this stand up? No, it won't stand up. Will this stand up? Just about stands up. This one's gone a bit harder actually. Really hasn't got much flex in at all. You do need a bit of flex. So to join the pieces together, what do we do? We um, score, here's the first piece, we score, I've just got a kitchen knife because I'm pretending I'm at home with you and we haven't got a real knife, look it's fine. Obviously the wooden one would be no good for this but you could do this with a pin if you like, be careful with the pin. All right. So we score that edge and then we put some slurry on, here's your little slurry pot. Now slurry is um, a glue, it's a mixture of clay and water. I've made it up for you, but if you run out, you just leave your clay in some water and it will easily turn into slurry. Every single piece that joins has to be scored. I did this side earlier and um, then it has to be slurried as well. So lots of slurry going on. Copious, that means lots of slurry. Okay. We put that piece onto the corner. It does not go at the side. This is really, really important. It goes on top. And if we just give it a little wriggle backwards and forwards, look, that's really clever. Watch, it already holds. But we do actually want to make it a little bit more secure than that. So I just run my brush along there and then I'll take some soft clay. Now I've got my soft clay in the bag, in the plastic bag. Please keep your clay in the bag. And it really is very malleable. The reason people don't succeed with slab, slab, slab pots is because they join the slabs and then put coils on the seam, which are too hard. Feed it onto the join, like that. It's a little finger press. You can see how soft it is. Roll it very quickly between your hands. If you take too long to roll, it will definitely dry out. So the next thing that you need is a wooden tool, which I had earlier. There's no disappear. There it is. And you split the coil downwards like this. So you split it in half and then upwards like this. To join it. Okay, then run your finger along it. Don't make it disappear completely. You need to get your sponge out of the bag. Get your sponge. You need a pot of water and a damp sponge, but not a sopping wet sponge, to join it like that. Now, every single that's a really good join. Every single join has got to have that scoring and slowing. This is our random piece of clay. Do you remember what I said for the base? We can lift this up now and place it on the base like that. It stands up nicely. And the first thing that we do is to mark where the base is going to go. It's going to go there. It's going to go there. 
And we take that off, leave it like that. And again, we score where it's going to join. So it's a very, very simple process of score, slurry, join, and brace with a coil. Pop the slurry on there. Really put lots on, don't put water on. Must be slurry. And what I've already done here is some scoring because we know that this edge here has also got to have a good join. Okay, pick that up, place it on there like that, give it a wiggle, 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 like that. And look, lifts it. That's the suction, that's the tension, and that's really good. Okay. I usually get a moist sponge and get rid of the slurry and then use my soft clay remember a very very quick roll again another fault is if you spend too long making your coil because your hands are warm and they dry the clay out and then it cracks it gets hard and then you can't feed it easily if you feel clever you can just use your finger to do that some people distort their pieces doing that. So if you've got big fingers, clumsy fingers, or it just doesn't work well, use your modeling tool, okay? I generally manage like this. And you can work on this and make it as tidy as you like. It's not actually gonna be seen, but it doesn't mean that you should leave it all untidy. So there's a corner done, all right. Now it's very, very secure, it's easy to go on. Get rid of the slurry and the coil, and then take your next piece, it's actually this one. I've actually already scored this piece, and we don't, uh, be careful, when you, you've got two pieces up, work out, that one's going to go there, that one's going to go there, and, and it's all going to fit together. So work it out, because if you add it to the edge, you'll suddenly find that that piece doesn't fit okay so um, I've already scored that I've scored that um, gonna roll the slurry on another fault is people very often get the slurry and um, brush it into the clay and brush it flat and all they do is fill up all those holes that have been created and then the join isn't as watch my nose, isn't as strong. So that goes there like that, and I've forgotten that I need to do that edge there as well. And I also need to do there, which I've omitted to score in advance. There you go, like that, something like that. Um, and then roll the slurry on, rather than paint it into the hole you've created like that. That goes on here. There we go. Push it into the corner. Pushing it so that it meets that outside edge and bringing that in like that. I can run my finger up there. Don't worry about the lack of pattern here. We're going to address that later. Push that down. And now a little sponging inside and another column. So quickly, you can do it on the table if you struggle between your fingers, but make sure that you do it quickly. Okay, and make sure it's not, you know, a plastic table. Clay's just going to stick to that. I'm still working on my cloth. I could have actually got rid of it and started working on the wooden table. Mind you, you probably wouldn't want to work on your wooden table at home if it's what you're going to eat off later. So, okay, I could do this a lot neater than that, but I think you might get a bit bored waiting for me. But the sticking, it's a good point to get your modelling tool in 
kind of work that clay in. Now before I add the last piece on, what I'm going to do is to actually take the knife and cut here and here. And then here. Because I want to turn this over like this and I want to get my fingers in and really tidy that up. Okay, once I've done that, I can stand it up properly. And the last piece, let's hope it fits, goes like that like that and like that and yep yeah, it's going to join that's good news once the clay's gone this hard it's you know it's difficult to sort of move it around so with the slab part accuracy in cutting and your design is really important and that's why i say do it on paper and try it out in fact there's nothing wrong with making a paper template and then actually getting some cardboard and cutting it all out of cardboard and taping it all together with um, some masking tape and taking a good look at it and make sure it's a good fit, it's you know a good size and it's a shape you want. Very often when you're playing with these templates it's hard to visualise them as a 3D piece. But if you've tried it out with paper before you start, you know sort of the size it's going to be and whether it's going to, not being too pressy here, it uh, just needs to go on. Oops. And you can see that I put lots and lots of slurry on. Okay, so the last piece, that goes on there. Do, 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 do. And that fits in there. So each piece fits around the square never onto the side of the base never onto the side of the base easy mistake i'll say it again don't add the pieces onto the side if you were in my studio i'd be watching for that and i'd be saying what are you doing i can't see what you're doing so if it all goes wrong watch the video again and work out what you didn't listen to Okay. Now, that last bit of coil on each side. So you can imagine now that if you have got a big hand and you've made a very, very narrow piece, it's going to be very, very difficult to get your last coil in. Uh, I do it without looking. I'm not looking, I can't see it, but I'm feeding it along here and imagining where it's going, I'm sure it's fine. Now I'm gonna rub my finger in and rub it along, make sure there are no bits sticking out. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fine. And if you can't get your hand inside, that's a little bit of a, a problem. Um, you can get round it by using your modeling tool. Again, I'm not looking, but I'm feeling it, feeding it on, pressing it down and hoping for the best. We'll know if it worked. If I said it didn't, the whole pot will fall apart later. And you'll know if you've got your clay to dry when you start building your pot, because if you have, then it's more likely to come apart. So whatever happens, it's not my fault. You just didn't miss it. Okay. Right, that's looking tidy. It's a good idea to give some extra support at this time to the top. So I make a little ball like that, pop it on the corner like that and then feed it in, so press it all the way down, feed it across and it neatens up that bit of the, the pot and make sure that it's all going to stay sound. Okay, so four little balls, do you want to give me a hand tool? If your pot isn't um, level if it's not equal at the top then you might have a bit of a lopsided pot that'll be down to your template or you're cutting around your template perhaps you didn't follow it accurately 
Um, but you can always trim it down. Just hold a ruler against it and measure all the way around and then trim before you put these corners on. Okay, you might need a sharp knife for that. Okay, now what we have here is in fact um, edges that need attention. Push with your finger, push, push, push. Make sure that they're all joined. And of course there's no pattern on. So this is when we take a little bit of bark and we rip it off. The big piece, I won't mind, we've got lots of bark. And you push it into the clay and you repattern it. And don't just push it in in a, a uniform way because your bark isn't uniform. And that will just look push, push it all together, make sure it's really joined. Get rid of any any seam showing and then texture texture you would never have imagined a bit of bark could be so useful look at that seam there push 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 it together get rid of it if you don't it will fall apart and then use your bit of bark to give it a bit of je ne sais quoi and oh that one there look not joined but is now I, I could really go to town on this and make it quite misshapen and I think it would look quite good but I've made it tidy for you now the base needs a bit of attention maybe a bit of dragging clay up if it's sticking out down there and again use your bit of bark to pop the texture back in especially at the corners, turn it round, give it a bit of the tension, this one's not too bad actually, I've lost a bit of my corner down there, but you know this is supposed to be a very kind of organic natural form, nothing in the outside apart from buildings is uniform, it's all every which way. So. Just so you can see a bit more clearly, there is a pot, well joined, it hasn't got a top that goes with the rest of it. Again, this is when you can break down those edges, maybe even round those corners and make it a little bit more natural, make it look lovely. I'm quite happy with that. That's my slab pot. Oh, I've picked up bits of clay off the table. That's not very clever. Tidy all the little bits and spare bits away. Pop it onto something clean when you've finished. Okay, so there's my slab pot. Yours doesn't have to be this shape. You can change it a bit. You could get really creative. I'm really keen to see what you do with this. But the key things are rolling the clay until it is properly flat. And drying it carefully, but not over drying it. Making sure the corners are joined well with lots of scoring and slurry. And um, then just really paying attention to uh, the tiny things at the end to just tidy it up. I think that this goes very nicely with this one. In fact, let's pop a little bit of fern in there. And a daffodil. There you go. I hope you like it. I hope you like it, Mum, because I've made it for you. I know you're watching this. I bought the outside in and you get it later. When you've finished your part, uh, leave it to dry a little. Now we don't want it to dry until it's completely brittle. When clay dries out, it goes through various stages. There's a stage at which it's very, very floppy. There's a stage at which it becomes like cardboard. That's when you want to transport it. And the stage when it really dries out becomes pale when it's brittle and it breaks. If you put it in a box and bring it back like that and it breaks, we can't mend it. Um, so bring it back when it's got to what we call the leather hard stage. It's still quite dark. Okay. If you feel um, 
that you would like to, well, what we'll do is we'll fire this for you, and if you feel that you would like to glaze it, we can send another parcel back, which would be called a glazing parcel with your work in. So you can either have it just fired, or you can have it glazed. So your glazing parcel will contain glazes. Glazes are paints that we paint onto the pottery, but it's got to be fired again. So you have to bring it back. We've got some samples here, the kind of colours, and you'll get little pots in your um, box so that you can choose. As you can see, all of these recesses that are in the clay there mean that there's a little bit of light relief going on. And at different temperatures, those recesses become really quite interesting. You can really play with the colours, like watercolours, and mix them a little bit. There's lots you can do, but I'll tell you about that in a glazing package with a glazing video later. You've got seven days to return your parcel so we can get it fired and turned around and other people can have the tools from your box. Thank you.